And just a reminder that the renewal of the uh, uh, of this block is, and what this really pertains to is a sales tax, a 1% sales tax for education, otherwise known as East Gloss, and it is a tax on all retail sales that occur in Muskogee County. Each person who makes a retail purchase in the county contributes to SLOS, which supports our public schools. Uh, as most of you may be aware, uh, we had a 2009 SLOS, uh, and the original uh, amount of money that was anticipated to be raised was around $232 million. But because of the recession that occurred in the interim, or the, the tail end of that recession, uh, the collections came in at about $194 million, so we're short of the original projections, which caused uh, some of the projects to be deferred. So I want to outline for you what the SPLOS can in fact be used for. It can be used for school construction, capital projects, technology, new buses in terms of transportation, furniture, fixtures, and equipment, otherwise known as FF&E, and that's just as the name implies, it's furniture for classrooms, fixtures, and equipment. But it's also important to note what it cannot be used for. The SPLOS may not be used for day-to-day -day operational expenses. It cannot be used for salaries or personnel. In other words, we can't give raises with it directly from SPLOS. We cannot uh, buy additional personnel like paraprofessionals or uh, the like. Uh, we cannot use it to offset budget shortfalls we might be incurring, and we've had many of those that we'll talk about uh, toward the end. It cannot be used for books and curriculum. That too is another misnomer. A lot of people are in misunderstanding that um, the SPLOS can be utilized to purchase books, and that is a prohibited expenditure under the SPLOS uh, funding. But I want to make sure everybody understands that when we talk about system-wide, we're talking about elementary, middle, and high school. Toward that end, when you talk about autistic programming, we've already mentioned, it speaks to all levels. K-12. So we want to make sure that everybody understands that this will touch all of our students. Addition to the South Library, that helps all of our South patrons with the library system. Security improvements obviously ensure that all of our students and staff are kept safe. Replacement or purchase of furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Replacing outdated buses and related equipment, that touches all the shores. Refurbishment of school nutrition, outdated kitchens, I've already mentioned that. 21st technology. As I said, every student will have to be assessed on the high stakes test using an electronic environment. So then there's the finance, and this is the other part. It's basically one item, line item, and it's roughly four million dollars uh, to for the financing of the bonds. For a total of 192 million dollars and change uh, is the projection. And I want to be clear here. People will ask, well, what happens if we get to that amount and we haven't reached the five years? It's whichever comes first. We either reach this amount or five years. Whichever comes first, it stops. All collections cease at that point. Now, I think this is germane to the conversation we've been talking about. This goes to the point about what happens about the squats. So, this gives you some idea. I think everybody's probably heard about austerity cuts and lack of funding coming from the state based on the formula that they uh, promised that we were trying to see. So you can see just from 2003 to 2008, there were total reductions of almost $31.5 million. Since 2008, going through 2015, the grand total reductions is almost $178 million. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a squat. That is a squat. In addition, equalization funding. As you can see, over the last five years, we have ended up losing, in equalization dollars, about $22.5 million, on top of the 178 that I just mentioned. Now, equalization, in case you're not sure what that is, it's a bureaucratic form of Robin Hood. It takes from the richer districts and gives the poor. I mean, concept, I have no problem. If I were in Quitman County that has very little tax base, I certainly can understand that. Okay, but that's not always been the case. There have been some districts, because of the calculation of the formula, were considered poor districts, that uh, such as Gwinnett. Okay, yeah, I heard a few snickers. Uh, but anyway, that is the fact. So last year we lost. Last year alone we lost 5.2. We were number one. We were the number one district that lost the most amount of money in terms of equalization dollars. So here are some of the highlights. 
what we want to talk about. New schools have been built for anticipated future growth and replace old existing buildings. Aaron Cone, Dorothy Height, some of those are New Carver. Additional classroom space has been added so students are no longer housing quarters. The board made a commitment many years ago. We will rid the district of portable classrooms. They're all gone. As of last June, all portable classrooms, no students are housed in portable classrooms. Gymnasiums are now air conditioned. And the district was able to increase student access to new technologies and internet-based information. But as I said, it's ever-expanding, ever-evolving, ever-updated. From the most recent external audit, this is important, um, our external auditor, Robinson Grimes, shared with us that, in fact, through auditing, that the SPLOS had, in fact, been expended efficiently and economically. Likewise, the Citizens Advisory Committee, which meets on a regular basis and has since 2009 to monitor the expenditures, they too concur that the SPLOS funds have been used as they were allocated and intended in an efficient and effective manner. 